poem is dedicated to Love for Shell Shepherd, Love Surrounds. There is an inner beauty that decorates her heart. It shines or beams her spirit onto the stage of life. Some folks are confused by her physical appearance. She smiles and embraces her identity. She struts the fiercest path to walk you would ever imagine. She offers glamour, style, and honesty. She teaches others to honor their inner beauty. She gives the world her best self. She is real, true, and original. That's why love surrounds her wherever she goes. I'm going to jump into D.C. since we are in the District of Columbia, and I've been living in D.C. since 1986. And there's a whole chapter called Chapter 9, Home, D.C., 9-11, America, and President Obama. <laughs> so, Maya Angelou writes, the ache of home lives in all of us, the safe place where we can go as we are and not be questioned. And then Bell Hooks is one of my favorite poets and authors and professors and cultural critics, she writes, I chose places that were diverse, <coughs> neighborhoods with ethnic, racial, religious, and sexual diversity, <coughs> neighborhoods that were characterized by acceptance of difference. And then from our own president, Barack H. Obama, there is not a liberal America and a conservative America. There is the United States of America. There is not a black America, and a white America, and a Latino America, and an Asian America. There is the United States of America. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is DC in the 90s. And I moved to U Street in 1990, so I've been a proud resident for the last 20 years. And it's changed quite a bit. And I moved to U Street because growing up, that's what I heard was, was our, our street uh, through the book. And, uh, and, I was, and I had a chance to buy a piece of the rock. Yeah, sure. I was a little scary at the time in 1990 because that part of the rock was not always the best. But they were selling other pieces of rock two blocks <laughs> away. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't cool. Yeah, it was frightening, actually. It was. It was. It was. But I let you fly off. Yeah. I did. Yeah. I'm glad I stayed, yeah. I stayed the course. Yeah. You know? So this is DC in the 90s. As an emerging poet and artist with a deep passion for the Afrocentric movement, DC was a great place to be in the 90s. The creative energy was contagious. Folks were always doing stuff. My weeks were jam packed with events. On some nights, my best friend Kamari and I would grab dinner at Soul Vegetarian Cafe on Georgia Avenue and head over to Howard University's Black Run Center to hear lectures on black history and politics given by Dr. Francis Black Ruffton, mm -hmm. Arthur Tony Browner, Professor Jesse McVeigh Begg, and Brother Steve Coakley. Mm -hmm. We'd also go to Union Temple Baptist Church in Anacostia to hear different Afrocentric scholars speak. When we got hungry for spoken word, we went to Soul Mother's Pizza on 14th Street. That's where I got my first taste of Tony Asante Lightfoot's poetry and open mic night. After Soul Brothers Pizza closed their business, we followed Tony over to It's Your Mug, a black-owned gallery and cafe in Georgetown, to hear the voices of local poets at her Tuesday night open poetry readings. All kinds of busy folks would attend, including some of my favorite poets like Holly Bass and Debbie Ellington Felton. If Sonia Sanchez, Nikki Giovanni, or Anna Bazan or Bell Hooks were in town, do a book signing, we'd always go sit in a vertical book on DuPont Circle. Once we decided to become vegetarians, we shopped at Brother Bay's health food store on 15th and L. After the harvest on U Street, we'd feed us healthy organic meals if we got lazy and decided not to cook. A few blocks down, we discovered Zawadi, our favorite Afrocentric home accessory store. Right next to Zawadi, we fell in love with the lingerie, beauty, and bath accessories and jewelry at Claudette's collection. To quench our literary thirst, we would walk up U Street to Sister Space and Books and spend a few hours laughing, reading, and buying books by and about black women. On the weekends, we'd spend time sipping wine and listening to jazz at Tacoma Station. On Sundays, we'd meet friends for lunch at Montego Bay Cafe in Alice Morgan. An 
In the summertime, we hung out at concerts held at Fort DuPont Park and Hot Air. We never missed Alex Morris Day in September. In the fall, we would often spend time at Howard University homecoming events and gather with friends for happy hour at Mangles on 14th and Neary. Our winters were spent watching independent films at the movie theater on 19th Street on DuPont Circle, going to museum exhibits at the Smithsonian, hosting get-togethers in our homes and watching independent musicians and singers perform at State of the Union on 13th and Neary. If it was real late and real cold, we'd head to Ben's Chili Bowl, order veggie burgers and fries. 